Hi there and welcome to our daily service. It's lovely to have you join us today. We're going to begin with the first verse from Mark's Gospel which we'll be looking at all this week in our services. Let's read the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. Father, we praise you that in this uncertain world, in this world full of sorrow and pain and heartache, we praise you we have good news about your Son, your King, Jesus. Amen. So much to give thanks for because of Jesus, because of our God's great kindness to us. And we're going to pray together a prayer of general thanksgiving. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory forever and ever, Amen. This week we're going to be learning about the Lord Jesus through the lens of the Apostle Peter and Peter's interactions with Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. And we're going to begin in Mark chapter 1 verses 16 to 18 where Jesus calls Peter or Simon as he's known then, calls Simon Peter to follow him. Let me read Mark 1 verses 16 to 18. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Simon, he's a, he's a fisherman. His dad's left them, the family fishing business. And so him and his brother are doing what they always do. Perhaps it's early morning. They're putting out their nets for their daily haul. Day in, day out, week in, week out, catching fish, selling fish. It's what they do. It's who they are. There's a man called Jesus. He's been preaching publicly about the kingdom of God coming near. He's calling on people to repent and believe. Of course, Simon's heard about him. He's heard about the preaching. But then as Peter gets on with what he does every day, putting out the nets to catch the fish, Jesus, the preacher, arrives at his front door. And he says to Simon, and he says to his brother, you two, you're with me now. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. No small thing that he asks of them. He says, look, I'm going to give you a new identity. No longer fishermen, but followers. Contingent upon me, dependent upon me, defined in your relationship to me, fishermen to followers. And I'm going to give you a new purpose. No longer fishing for fishes in the lake, but fishing for people. By calling on people to join Jesus' king, join Jesus' kingdom, 
and follow Jesus as king. Look, you two, I'm going to give you a new identity and a new purpose. Our world and every generation of people in this world have been asking those two great questions for thousands of years. Who am I? What am I for? And as we see Jesus relate to Peter this week, we're going to get a great glorious answer to those two questions. In Peter's story, we can see our story. As Peter was given a new identity, a follower of Jesus, a new purpose to make Jesus known in this world, we can see our own identities, our own purposes. But let us notice what we learn about Jesus just as he arrives on the scene, barrels into Peter's life at the beginning of Mark's Gospel. Come, follow me. Come, you'll be fishers of people. And Mark says, as soon as Simon and his brother Andrew, as soon as they hear those words, at once, they leave their old way of life behind and they follow Jesus along the way. That is the sort of man that he was. That is the sort of man that he is. He speaks and they are compelled to follow. Mark will show in the first couple of chapters of his gospel that Jesus speaks and evil flees. And Jesus speaks and illness departs. That is the sort of authority this preacher had when he opened his mouth. And that is authority he still has as he calls people to follow. Come follow me, a new identity contingent upon me, dependent upon me, defined by your relationship to me. Come have a new purpose to make me known in this world, to fish for people. And just as 2,000 years ago he called and Peter followed, so Jesus has been calling ever since. And I, and perhaps many of you, have heard and we followed. At once they left their nets and followed. We're going to move in a time, into a time of prayer now. First we're going to pray uh, some words from Psalm 25, a prayer that we would be those that trust and obey and follow Jesus as our King. So let's pray together these words from Psalm 25. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. We pray for Christians across this globe and in this country, wherever we might live, we pray for Christians to not tire of doing good, to encourage one another, to find ways of walking together in the Christian life, even when it's apart. Father, we pray that your people across the world might be committed to doing good for the world. And we pray it for Jesus' sake. the Church of England Collect for today. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you in their death as in their life, grant that your church, inspired by their teaching and example and made one by your spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, 
Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing, one my heart, I will follow you, I will walk by faith, you have brought me near by your unrelenting grace. king he is to follow 
but of grace and mercy and truth and love. Let's pray a final prayer that we would be those that follow Jesus, a new identity, a new purpose, follow the one who is King of Kings and Lord of all. Father God, your son exploded into the life of Simon, Peter, and called him to follow. We pray that we might be those that follow him, whatever this day, whatever this week might involve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, have a wonderful day.